What's up everyone, Full Animix here. Welcome to Spring 2022 Anime. How the fuck did we get here? Honestly, this past couple months have been kind of a blur for me, but hopefully I'll be able to make some more anime content soon as I've been a little bit more motivated recently. But yeah, without further ado and without more procrastinating, let's take a view of Spring 2022 Anime. So first up, we have Rising of the Shield Hero Season 2. This season has been delayed so much, but I'm so hyped that it's out, and the first episode felt weird. Am I the only one who knows that there was a lack of, like, background music in, like, every scene? <laughs> like, the whole atmosphere felt really empty, and the world felt empty as well. There was no, like, background voices or music or anything. It was just our protagonists just talking the entire time and with their supporting characters. And it felt really weird, and I'm not sure if that was just me that noticed it, or maybe it was there and I'm just smooth-braining it right now. And then we're also focused focusing on the new character, the green-haired girl who I don't remember, and honestly, I don't think anyone remembers. Like, I guarantee that you don't remember her name, and you probably just watched the episode just then. But other than that, I'm really hyped for this season. They kind of pulled the plug on the waves for this season, so we're going to be focusing on a giant turtle for 13 episodes, which is exactly what I wanted in my fantasy isekai drama, so... Cool. All right, next up we have the anticipated Giga Chad of this season, Spy Family. Now, Spy Family is a very special show for me because I've actually read the manga for this, and it's probably one of the only manga I've ever read. <laughs> but yeah, I've actually read a pretty decent chunk of Spy Family, and I can safely say that is an extremely good manga. From the characters to the comedy to pretty much everything in the show, it's just perfect. The world building is astonishing, the characters are so relatable and funny, and the whole story and plot just, it's like my dream show, and it's finally been adapted into an anime. And I can safely say that Wit Studio and Cloverworks have really knocked it out of the park. They have really nailed the manga style and it's just so out of all the shows in spring 2022, I humbly implore you that you watch Spy Family. Even if you don't have any time at all, it's just a ride. It's an honest, fun ride that I'm pretty sure everyone can enjoy. But yeah, Spy Family should end up being one of the best anime to come out this year. Alright, next we have Kaguya Summer Season 3. I feel like we just finished Season 2, like, oh my god. What can I not say about Lover's War? Lover's War is probably one of the best rom-coms out there, and it's definitely deserved that. I didn't watch Season 1, but I did watch Season 2, and honestly, you can just watch this whenever you want. It's one of those weird shows where you don't have to know too much about the show to watch it, except that the obvious two protagonists that want to get together but can't because they're next-level Sundarays, like... <laughs> This is like next level power levels right now. And then the supporting cast just gets better and better with each season. Like Ishigami used to be like this like background character that no one cared about. And then in season two, they just made him into a proper person. It's just all around a good show. It's all around a good show. If you have time, give it a watch through. But yeah, it's a good flick. Komi Can't Communicate Season 2. This actually feels like we just had Season 1, and it's probably true because Season 1 came out, like, <laughs> pretty much last season. Like, that's crazy. Uh, season 2 is pretty much the same as Season 1. It pretty much goes off from it without any beats. It expects you to watch Season 1 and then just binge watch it all the way through. That's what it feels like. Like, the first episode does, like, a little recap of what's happening in the show and what's the overall goal of the show. But other than that, it just feels like a normal Comic Con Communicate episode. Now, personally, I didn't really finish season one. I felt like it was dragging on a bit too much with the amount of episodes that it had, but I still really enjoyed it, and I really enjoyed this first episode, and I think if anyone really likes Komi in season one, they're still gonna like it in season two. Shikamori's Not Just a Cutie. Now, this is the one where everyone is fighting, throwing swords, and chucking arrows at each other about the war between Shikamori and Marine 
from My Dress Up Darling about who could be best girl for 2022. And it's honestly a very tight race right now because this girl has got some cool factors right now. Basically, if you haven't watched the first episode, this girl isn't just a cutie, she's also extremely cool. And, and we're gonna get 12 episodes of that, so... Cool. Personally, I think Maureen is just a way better character and overall more likable and relatable. But I don't know, something could change. I don't know. It's like she's got pink hair. Everyone likes pink hair girls. We got like four pink hair girls this season. So I'm quitting heroing. That just that just doesn't sound right. Now, this is a pretty interesting spin on how we perceive fantasy shows. Normally, we have our generic hero character who defeats the demon lord, but this is post that so basically all that's happened so he defeats the entire demon lord army by himself and then he expects all like praise and glory but doesn't get any of that and then he's basically banished and then joins the demon lord's army because that's his only choice what <laughs> Honestly, I really enjoyed the episode. I like the chemistry between all the characters. I feel like it's really good for some reason. And I usually expect these type of shows to be bad, but honestly, I feel like it could be pretty good. It's got Konosuba levels of comedy, but not like quite up there, but it's it's a pretty funny show. So if you enjoy Konosuba and you like that comedy fantasy stuff, I feel like you guys will probably enjoy this a lot. The greatest demon lord is reborn as a typical nobody. <laughs> Why do we always get the same fucking show every season? Every season, they just don't miss a beat. You guys want a power fantasy? Boom, here you go. Here's like four of them. I'm over it, to be honest. So yeah, this is probably just shitty fantasy crap that we have all expected for this pass millennia i guess this is probably what endgame is right now it's just all isekai fantasy demon lord power fantasy shit i'm over it <laughs> if you couldn't tell the show is just so boring it's so bland like basic as fuck <laughs> basic as fuck all right next up we have overlord season 4.5 i am actually very surprised that this got adapted and was serialized in general because this is such a plain ripoff of Overlord, it's just not even a joke. Like, it strips down the bare bones of Overlord, except that he's actually a good guy and not a bad guy. It's just so jarring and so weird. <laughs> Like, it's a skeleton in a suit of armor with a massive sword who's eventually gonna get a teammate or whatever. This is, this is like the Black Knight in Overlord, and it's just that. It's basically just that. I can't say it's a bad show, but if you guys like spin-off shows that similar to other shows, and if you like Overlord, then yeah, you could check this out. Day to Live 4. 4. Season 4. We've had four seasons of Data Live, and you think you don't have enough yet? Shut the fuck up. <laughs> it's four seasons of this show, and we're still getting waifus. <laughs> Honestly, I don't remember anything from the first three seasons. Yes, I did watch them. Like, the Data Live fan base must be so. They must be like the Dragon Ball fan base where they only watch one series and that's it. <laughs> they watch Data Live stuff, and then the Dragon Ball guys only watch Dragon Ball. It's just so. Stupid. Uh, but yeah, good show, 7 out of 6. What? And honestly, I'm not really watching any other shows. There's a lot of other shows that I really do want to watch. Like, Arei-san wa Karin. That show. And I've also got to watch The Sentence of a Bookworm. But these are just some shows that I haven't watched and I'll probably watch later on. Because some shows I get a feeling that I may not like them when they come out seasonal. So they come out every week. And I feel like I'll just enjoy it a lot more when the whole season's out and I can just binge watch it through. And it's what I did with Ascendance of a Bookworm because the show is so fucking slow sometimes. And I enjoy it a lot more when it's just all out, 
ready for me to truck through. But yeah, this season does have some pretty big names. Obviously, Shield Hero, Spy Family, Lovers War, and Kami are just the four big powerhouses driving through this season. And then a couple of other shows that are also really good, like I said. But make sure to check out some other shows that kind of appeal to you that I didn't mention. But yeah, thank you guys for watching this video. Leave a like and subscribe. And I'll talk to you guys later.